Welcome my people, hello everyone, welcome to another video of mine, it's Kamal AA. Big news, breaking news, Chelsea to have the availability, the ability to spend between 200 and 300 million pounds this coming summer, even before sales. That is coming out from reliable journalists, reliable newsletters, reports, Ben Jacobs coming out. Now of course Ben Jacobs isn't the most reliable, he isn't a tier one journalist when it comes to his connections with Chelsea. However, he is actually a credible journalist that comes out with reliable news a lot of the time. We've had also connected Chelsea journalists stating that Chelsea do have a transfer kitty ahead of this summer, despite the fact that there's been rumours that Chelsea are on investigation and that we have to be careful due to FFP financial fair play regulations. However, according to Ben Jacobs, according to Simon Phillips, who's has a, a large following on Twitter who does have his own connections within Chelsea Football Club and he's confirmed that he's been receiving the same news as well. Now, what I'm going to discuss is how this is actually made possible because a lot of you guys are going to be baffled, especially rival fans stating that you've already spent £1 billion, you haven't had that return on investment yet, you haven't had that many sales, how are you able to spend continuous lumps of sum, lumps of money again in the summer window despite not but, you know, most likely getting Champions League football. And actually, the way the performances are going, we're probably going to finish the table again. And but that is a completely separate topic. The likelihood is Chelsea aren't going to get European football again. So in terms of prize money, we're not going to get that revenue. So a lot of rival fans are, are baffled and, and confused as to how Chelsea are actually making this happen. But I'm here to disclose how, from obviously what we've been reading and just using common sense. But as well as that, if we have that, which is likely, if we have that ability to, you know, make those incomings happen and actually make those big blockbuster signings who should Chelsea target in your opinion I'm going to give my opinion who should Chelsea target depending on who we've been linked with who would actually benefit the team going forwards and what does that mean for Chelsea next season even discussing briefly about managerial appointments as well now Ben Jacobs came out this is the official report Ben Jacobs came out and stated that Chelsea can make between 200 to 250 million pounds worth of signings even before sales now in terms of sales, in terms of outgoings, Chelsea will have to make outgoings before the end of the financial year. That is confirmed. Doesn't mean we're going to be in trouble for the financial fair play, but in terms of net spend, in terms of balancing the books, in terms of that, that financial reporting being made and that report being released after the 30th of June, how is that report going to look in terms of the investors, etc.? You want to make it look appealing. You want to balance the books. Chelsea will be making sales. Conor Gallagher, it looks very likely that he's going to be going. Whether you like him or not, it just looks likely he's going to be going because I don't see Maurizio Pochettino being here next season, even though he's in the manager's manager's favourite books. Do we know if the next manager is going to rate Gallagher? Big question mark. Probably not. Gallagher, pure profit. FFP. Again, when you sell Conor Gallagher, because he costs us nothing, because he came through Cobham, Chelsea's academy, it's going to be pure profit on FFP. So Chelsea, it's very appealing to sell him. So we've had interested clubs, Crystal Palace, Tottenham Hotspur, 40, 50, 60 million pounds room with price tag. He's most likely going to go. Ian Matson of Borussia Dortmund, who's had a terrific loan spell so far, scoring goals, assisting Dortmund. The fans are absolutely raving about him if you actually speak to them in Germany. So again, 35 million pounds is the rumoured fee that he might go to Dortmund for. So let's say hypothetically with Gallagher 12 months remaining in his contract, you could recoup maybe 45, 50 million pounds, pure profit. Ian Matson came through the academy, pure profit. This all goes towards our towards balancing the books. So you're looking at 35 million pounds, you're looking at 45 million pounds, that's approximately 80 million pounds. And then you look at someone like Armando Brogia, again, came through the academy, pure profit on loan of Fulham, isn't doing too well, but I'm sure a club will come in the summer, whether that's a Wolverhampton, a Fulham again, or a Crystal Palace. Rumoured price tag, 30 to 35 million pounds. All of a sudden, you're making 115 million pounds, 120 million pounds, pure profit. That's, again, we didn't make an initial outlay. There was no initial investment. There's no amortization costs on these players. They've, they've come through the academy. Chelsea are utilizing Cobham. And we're making pure profit well north of 100 million pounds. So that's one avenue. That's one way that Chelsea are going to be able to spend mega amounts of money in a summer where we're going to be splashing out astronomical fees again. Now, whatever the strategy, whatever the model is, if we stick to the model of signing inexperienced young players with huge potential again, like we've been doing, or we're going to start signing more experienced players, that remains to be seen. However, that's one avenue that Chelsea are going to be able to spend so much in a summer. Now, of course, the other 
is the fact that if you look at the, the money that Chelsea have actually spent, which is approximately £1 billion since, you know, in Todd Bowley's tenure, since the ownership change, a lot of those players are on long-term contracts, seven, eight, nine years. You've heard this story before, amortisation. So again, you're amortising their contract over the length of the contract. So I know UEFA rules are changing, but initially when we sign them on the contract of seven, eight, nine years, you're essentially, whatever the transfer fee is, you're dividing it by the length of their contract. So nine years, for example, you're splashing out 100 million pounds on Enzo, 100 on Caicedo, 100 on Mudrick. It doesn't matter because they're on eight, nine year contracts. You divide 100 million by eight and nine. So again, it's going to be 15 to 20 million pounds per year. The issue lies is if those players don't perform, you're not able to recoup the outlay you made and every year that's going to add. So as the years go by, as we're putting these players in long-term death row contracts, as people like to say, it's going to be more and more difficult to make those money, uh, to actually make those signings once again, if we don't actually secure Champions League football, if we don't win the major honours, etc, etc. But that's essentially the main reason plus the sales that's the main reason why Chelsea are going to be able to make 200 million pounds 300 million pounds of signings and incomings this summer now shifting on to who we could actually bring this summer we've of course been linked with Victor Ossiman although David Ornstein came out yesterday and so did Fabrizio Romano Chelsea are certainly monitoring Victor Ossiman but it is unlikely that Ossiman will come to Chelsea because of course not only we're not going to be, again, the only suitors after him because Manchester United, PSG are going to be after him as well. It's going to cost upwards of £100 million because of his release clause. And the issue with release clause is you can't amortise a contract because you have to pay all of the money up front. So you can't do a situation where you pay, let's say you agree, a £100 million transfer fee with a club. You can't then, usually when that happens, you don't pay all of it up front. You pay £30 million up front, then the following season you pay 10 20 and then the rest maybe bonuses, etc., etc., and you know, add-ons. It's a release clause. So a release clause means you have to pay the entire amount up front. So again, that's going to be a big issue in terms of FFP. So that's one issue. Number two, the, the unofficial wage structure that we have. We don't pay players more than £150,000 a week. We do pay players, you know, the median is around £100,000 a week. A lot of these players earn more than that because of bonuses when they achieve the major honours, when they score a certain amount of goals, assists, performances, yada, yada, yada. They then break the £200,000, £300,000 a week. That's a new model. So, awesome men's wages are not going to be met. It's a release clause. That's going to give us issues for FFP. And we're not his only club that's going to be after him. United are going to be after him. PSG are going to be after him. PSG can guarantee a lot more money. They're going to guarantee Champions League football. United, depending on where they finish, they could guarantee Champions League football. Chelsea are probably going to finish the table. And also, personally for me, I don't think Osimhen suits Chelsea. Do I like him as a player? Absolutely. Osimhen, I've watched him a lot. I've watched, I watch Serie A, not on a regular basis, but I watch it here and now. I watch the AFCON as well. He misses a lot of chances. That's number one. We don't create chances at Chelsea Football Club. We need players to create, to be innovative, to create chances for their players. We don't create chances. Osimhen misses a lot of chances. For that money or spending, I don't think it's, it's actually wise. Secondly, I don't think he fits the system. We need players that have an abundance of technical ability. I don't think Osimhen has that much technical ability. Is he a great finisher? Absolutely. Is he great in the air? Air really? Phenomenal. Work great? Absolutely. But when he plays with fantastic first touches, brilliant ability on the ball, technique, positional play. I think Osimhen lacks that. And I think there's much better players out there that you can buy for a lot cheaper that's going to elevate Chelsea a lot quicker. Benjamin Sesko, another player that we've been linked. I like Benjamin Sesko more. Again, Benjamin Sesko has a release clause, but his release clause at RB Leipzig is like 35, 40 million pounds, which again, is more financially reasonable. Is going to help us with FFP, but as well as that, he's not going to command the high wages. I think he's got higher potential, fantastic ability on the ball, technique, everything. Again, he is young, so he does fill that quota. I think we're more likely to sign Sesco over Arsenal. And I personally think, I know it's quite unpopular, I think Sesco suits us more than someone like a Victor Osimhen. We've been linked with other players in the Portuguese leagues, etc., etc. But in terms of the striking position, that is what we've been linked with so far. So again, if it was between Benjamin Sesco or Victor Osimhen, personally for me, I would prefer Benjamin Sesco. But... I want your thoughts and opinions. What do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Leave me your thoughts on Chelsea's FFP situation. Do you agree with me in that we have a very hard chance of spending a lot of money this summer and exactly how the FFP regulations work? Leave me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see all of you guys for my next video. Peace.